Well, as we all know, the Toyota RAV4 is one of the greatest crossover SUVs to reach America and the rest of the globe. It has managed to captivate hundreds of thousands of loyal purchasers with its excellent looks, practicality, and efficiency, which are characteristics that are typical of the Toyota brand as a whole. But is the touch to perfection missing out on anything? If there have been successes, there have been failures as well. And if you want to lay your hands on Toyota's RAV4 model, you need to watch this video. You're watching Tech Addicts, and we help you make your next decision easier and rational. So without any delay, let's get started. The RAV4 has had unwavering success ever since it was introduced to the market in 1994. To date, more than 10 million copies have been sold all over the world. It's possible that the Toyota RAV4 isn't quite as unrivaled as it previously was, now that it has to go up against tried-and-true competitors like the Honda CR-V, Mazda CX-50, and Kia Sportage. In spite of the fact that it is a part of a market that features an exceptionally high level of competition, the 2023 model is still more than deserving of your consideration as a potential purchase. When searching the second-hand market, it might be difficult to determine which model years produced the greatest versions of the RAV4, due to the fact that during the course of the RAV4's lengthy production run, some models have unavoidably been inferior to others. But don't worry, we've got you covered with a comprehensive guide that tells you which model years of the Toyota RAV4 you should steer clear of purchasing. The 2002 model year of the second generation of the Toyota RAV4. To get things rolling, we'll begin with the 20-year-old 2002 Toyota RAV4, which is the model in the RAV4 family that has historically been subjected to the most severe criticism overall. You'll find out later that the majority of criticisms leveled against the RAV4 have very little to do with the vehicle's performance, its looks, or its usability. Remember that it has always been a superb automobile, but some versions have shown to falter both in short-term dependability and long-term reliability, and that is exactly the situation with the 2002 Toyota RAV4 model. Transmission failure is the most common problem that owners of the 2002 RAV4s face, and it typically takes place well before the odometer reaches 100,000 miles. When this occurs, shifting in the RAV4 becomes increasingly difficult, which leads to timing issues and constant jerking, both of which render the car nearly impossible to operate safely. In addition, ECU failure is typical before the vehicle has reached 100,000 miles. Yet, given the age of the 2002 RAV4, this fact should not come as a surprise. If you're looking at the 2002 RAV4 that's close to or past the 100,000 mile mark and hasn't had any recent repairs made to its transmission, there's a good chance that the problem will show up sooner rather than later. Transmission repairs typically cost around $2,000, so if you're looking at this vehicle, you should know that the issue will likely arise sooner rather than later. Avoid buying a third-generation Toyota RAV4 between the years 2007 and 2008. In general, the third generation of the Toyota RAV4 was an excellent run for the vehicle, accounting for some of the model's greatest variants that have ever been produced. However, a significant number of purchasers have voiced several grievances over the 2007 and 8 models in particular. These issues, despite the fact that they aren't as widespread as the complaints against the 2002, are far more severe and expensive to fix. Both models have a problem with high oil consumption that happens rather frequently and typically shortly after 100,000 miles of driving, and the cost of getting this problem corrected can range anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000. In addition to this, the 2007 RAV4 is plagued with a clunk that can be heard coming from the steering wheel after 50,000 miles, as well as problematic suspension and engine breakdown issues that have been observed beyond 75,000 miles. In conclusion, the 2008 RAV4 has a problem called airbag non-deployment that can occur as early as 15,000 miles into the vehicle's life. This is one of the most hazardous problems on the whole list. The Toyota RAV4 from 2013 is capable of giving you quite the fright. When we talk about difficulties that might be rather hazardous, the RAV4 from 2013 is the appropriate follow-up because it has yet another of the most serious and pricey faults. Reports from many customers indicate that the 2013 RAV4 is capable of producing a highly hazardous abrupt acceleration burst on its own, which has resulted in a number of collisions that could not have been avoided. 
The problem presents itself roughly 22,000 miles into a vehicle's life on average, and the expense to repair it can easily exceed $10,000. Failures of the air conditioner and the navigation display can also occur before 6,000 miles, although they are not nearly as concerning as the previous two possibilities. The worst vehicle ever produced, the 2019 Toyota RAV4. Despite the fact that it was just released a short while ago in comparison to the other models on our list, the 2019 model year of the Toyota RAV4 is widely considered to be the absolute worst model year of the vehicle's entire production run. The 2019 model has the propensity to lurch severely while being driven at low speeds, and a number of additional gearbox, drivetrain, engine, and fuel system difficulties can surface early on as well. This can happen even before the vehicle is broken in 4,000 miles. Not only does this dramatically impair the 2019 RAV4's ability to be driven, but fixing these flaws may often cost up to $20,000 in the worst case scenario an inconceivable amount of money to spend on any automotive repair, much less after only a few thousand kilometers driven on the vehicle. That pretty much covers everything there is to know about the most worrisome problems that make these particular RAV4 model years unfit for being purchased in the resale market. However, we can't emphasize enough how excellent of a car the Toyota RAV4 is, because even the greatest of the best can't avoid problems, especially when they've been around for almost three decades. Despite this, we can't stress enough how fantastic of a car overall the Toyota RAV4 is. Talking about the latest variant of RAV4, which is the 2023, this RAV4 is a sensible, fuel-efficient SUV that speaks to your sense of common sense, which is one of the reasons why it has been a consistent bestseller for Toyota over the years. The history is carried on with the 2023 RAV4, which features a cabin that is accommodating of goods, an inexpensive starting price, and reasonable road manners. An 8-speed automatic transmission connects a 4-cylinder engine with a capacity of 2.5 liters to either the front wheels or all four axles. The acceleration isn't the smoothest, but the fuel efficiency is excellent. There's also the option of a hybrid or plug-in hybrid powertrain, but we will cover those models individually in our reviews. Even the most competent TRD off-road edition of the RAV4 is not likely to be able to make it to the same isolated locations as the more robust off-roaders such as the 4Runner and the Tacoma. However, the RAV4's rough aesthetics allow it to look at home among those other two vehicles. The RAV4 shines most when it is tasked with the more suburban responsibilities, such as making the commute to work each day or going on excursions to the local hardware store. The RAV4 from Toyota is equipped with a multitude of driver assistance technologies and attractive entertainment features as standard equipment. This serves to boost RAV4's value in comparison to its competitors. What's in store for the year 2023? This year, Toyota upgraded the infotainment system included in the RAV4 to a more recent model that features display panels that are significantly larger. This year, the standard display size on the LE, XLE, and XLE Premium and Adventure trim levels has been increased to 8 inches from 7 in the previous model year. The display size on the Limited and TRD off-road versions has been increased to 10 and a half inches. The most recent iteration of Toyota's user interface software is both more aesthetically pleasing and easier to use than the previous system. In addition, it supports over-the-air software upgrades and offers wireless connectivity for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The instrument cluster now comes with a display that is 7 inches in size as standard, while a display that's 12.3 inches in size is available on the XLE Premium and TRD off-road variants, but comes standard on the Limited. Although it's difficult for us to say no to the awesome new TRD off-road, we think it's best to exercise self-control and go for the more affordable XLE Premium. It comes with a lot of standard equipment that the XLE and LE don't offer, such as wheels that are 19 inches in diameter, a power liftgate, dual-zone automatic climate control, faux leather upholstery, and a leather-wrapped steering wheel and shift knob. These features are only available on the Limited. Because Toyota includes its suite of driver assistance systems as standard equipment throughout the board, there isn't much of a reason to opt for a more expensive grade. The only exception to this is if you truly want ventilated seats. Moving forward, that's it for today's video. We'll be right back with more, so don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.